Hey everyone, are you loving this awesome parallax scrolling effect? As you scroll, the background moves at a different speed, causing a stunning depth effect, perfect for making your website feel immersive, deep, and interactive. Looks cool, right? Well, today I'm going to walk you through how to build this effect step by step, starting from scratch. We'll build the HTML, write the CSS, and use a bit of JavaScript to make it all work. So let's dive in. All right, so let's start with a blank slate. First, we need to set up our basic HTML structure. And if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can simply type HTML, select the second entry from top, and generate the basic boilerplate. This gives us everything we need to start, a doc type, HTML, head, and body tags. All we need to do is change the title, right? So now that we have our basic HTML structure, Let's begin our coding. So next we are going to add three sections in the body tag. These will be the different parts of our parallax story. Inside the body, we'll create three section tags. Each one will represent a part of our story and we'll give them IDs so we can target them later with CSS and JavaScript. So I'm gonna fast forward from here and do a bit of typing. Okay, we are done. And you guys can pause and type it along. It's really simple. For now, we have just added three sections inside a div, and each section has a title and some text for now. We'll add some images later to really make the effect pop. Currently, if you want to see how it looks like, this is what it looks like. So not really a parallax effect, it's just text. So we are gonna add images in a bit, but first we need to add some styling to this text. So it really looks great after we place it on our images. So I'm going to go to our head section and gonna type. Right, so what did we do here? We reset the margin and padding on the body element. We are setting the height of section, we are setting the height of each section to 100BH, or which means each section will take up the full height of the viewport. We also added some basic styling to center the text in each section and make sure it's readable by adding a semi-transparent black background behind the text. And we are using background size cover to ensure background stretches to cover the entire section, which is of full screen height now. We also centered the background using the background position. The key ingredient is background attachment fixed, which is going to give the iconic fixed background effect as content scrolls past it. There are dedicated videos about each of these in our playlist and channel, so I won't go about explaining them in detail here. Finally, we adjust the size of our H1 and P headings and are ready to move on to next phase. But first, let's see how it looks like in the preview. And yeah, nothing is visible, but if I do Control A, you can see there is the text, but it is invisible in white background because its own color is white. And that is because it's gonna look good once we add the images. So let's close this preview for now, which is useless anyway. And let's make things interesting by adding some background images now. For each section, I'm going to add a background image using the background image property. So let's go about doing that. Perfect, so if you remember, section one, section two, and section three were the IDs of each section. And each section now has its own background image and you can replace these with your own image for a more personal touch. And we are using background attachment fixed, which means the background will stay in place while the content scrolls, giving us that parallax effect. Let me uh, tell you that these begins, adventure, and finish all are 1920 by 1080 pixel images that I'm using. So let's see how they look. Something is not right. This should have had a background. So let's see. Okay, I mistakenly provided 
four values instead of three. Now they look good. Uh, let me also add a border radius. So give it a more circular shape. Okay, that's correct. And right, that's gonna look better on a full screen, but uh, let's good enough for now. All right, so it's time to bring the parallax effect to life with some JavaScript. And don't worry if you're not super familiar with JavaScript because I'll walk you through it. So first we need to wait until the entire page is loaded before we start running any JavaScript. That's because we want to make sure all the images and content are fully ready to go before we start manipulating them. So let's add some JavaScript now in the head section. So we do this by defining a script section and I'm not specifying any attribute here which defaults to JavaScript, right? So let's add some code. We make the JavaScript wait by, by using an event listener that waits for the DOM content loaded event, right? Which means the browser has read the entire HTML file and has parsed it into an in-memory representation called document object model or DOM for short. So this just means that the page is ready to be interacted with. And inside this handler function, the event handler function, we are going to write the code that makes the parallax effect work. So next, we are going to grab all the sections that we that have the parallax class attribute. This is where our parallax effect will happen. I must admire the fact that you are still here because the faint-hearted closed the video while this code was being typed. So don't worry at all. Uh, I'll explain a few background concepts and this code would make absolute sense to all of you, right? So, but uh, first we need to go over a few concepts that uh, make a background of what we are doing here. And the first one is, let me open a file which I pre prepared to show you a cut down version of what we uh, want to achieve here. So look here, so we have a background image. Uh, let me open the preview, right? So this is the background image that we have applied on a div, which is uh, 100VH or a full viewport height tall. We are applying background position center to center the image and background size cover to stretch the image to cover the viewport and a, a border to just show the div. Uh, surroundings so we are using a div but that could be a section uh, doesn't matter i can in fact change it to section so that we don't confuse all right so note with interest that there is no background repeat mentioned here and i am bringing it up uh, because we are not setting background repeat to no repeat so the default value of background repeat that is repeat is in effect which is critical for what I'm about to show you. Now, what happens if I set the background position which controls where the image is positioned in the viewport a bit down from the top, right? So if I specify a Y offset, let's say of uh, 90 pixels, right? The image got shifted down, but its bottom part started appearing on top. So now let me, uh, Control Z and show you again, this is the full image. Look at this part, which is the bottom part. And now I'm going to apply the Y offset again and see the uh, image kind of rolled down. It shifted down. It is now starting from this point instead of here because we specified that the image should start from 90 pixels from the top. So it did, but in doing so the image started repeating itself or its bottom bar started appearing on top over here. Now what happens if I put that on repeat? So in this script, I have a variable set to zero initially, but every two seconds I am adding a 90 increment to it and then applying it to the background position as center and then 90 pixels. So it's going to be 90 pixels after two seconds, 180 pixels after four seconds and so on, right? And I'm going to uncomment that and let's see what happens. See, the image is kind of rotating, like it's 
pasted on a roller so it's gonna roll uh, around itself and we can control the speed so we can say one second and it's gonna roll faster i can say just half a second and it's gonna roll even faster right so we can control the rolling speed of the image here all right now let's focus on what happens uh, with our original uh, web page just note that the javascript we typed is not in effect at this moment let me explain something so for our parallax effect what we are going to do is we are going to rotate images in all three sections like what you saw in the demo right so this image is going to be repeated uh, at its own speed this image would be repeating at its own individual speed and the third image is also going to be repeating at its individual speed being controlled by JavaScript. So we can specify different speeds uh, using the data speed attribute on the section itself. But uh, for the example that we type, we are using a consistent rolling speed of 0.5, right? I'm going to explain that in a second. But the second constraint we are gonna put is that when the scroll bar is way up top, the first image should be fully visible on the screen upright. Right, it's not. Its bottom should not be appearing on top. It should not be flipped anywhere. Uh, it should not have rolled. So, uh, if it's if the scroll bar is up top, the first section is visible and the image should be fully visible upright. When the scroll bar reaches the center, the same goes for the second image. It should be fully visible, like the section two should be fully visible with its image upright. And same goes for the last image when we uh, scroll all the way to the bottom, right? So with these two constraints uh, in mind, let's go back to our JavaScript that we had typed. Oh, this is distracting, so let me get rid of it. All right, now let's focus on what this function Pellex effect does. So we are gonna call it every time we make a scroll movement. So scroll by is the scroll position of the page. This is done by checking how far down you have scrolled so we know how much to move the background image. So every time you make any scroll movement, be it using the mouse wheel or dragging the scroll bar on the right, you are gonna get a value which would indicate how far down from the top you have scrolled. And depending on different browser behaviors, we can uh, either get window.scrollY, document.documentElement.scrolltop or document.body.scrolltop as a valid value. So uh, that's why we are checking for all three in case window.scrollY is not available, check this one. And this is an R symbol, right? So if that is also not available, then check that value as well. So eventually we are going to get a scroll Y value with this code, right? Next, we are going to loop over our parallax sections, uh, which are all the sections with the class parallax defined on them which is our section one, two, and three, right? And for each section, what we are going to do is we are going to get a speed variable. So speed variable we have set to 0.5 as default, but you can set a speed variable using a data-speed attribute on any section. So if I do data-speed equal to, uh, let's say 0.8, on this section, it is going to return 0.8 over here. But uh, if that is not specified, we are going to default to 0.5. So I'm going to get rid of it for now. So this speed is the rolling speed. This is going to control how fast an individual section is rotating around itself. All right, in the next line, we calculate the distance from the top of the page to the top of the section, which tells us where that section is positioned relative to the scroll. Right, and do remember the constraint that when the scroll is at the top, the first section should be fully visible with image upright. When we reach the middle, uh, the second section should be fully visible in its original position and so on. The, the uh, next line, we are calculating the distance from the viewport or the part of the page that is visible. So viewport is that as we scroll down, this is the viewport. So uh, this, is the distance we are trying to gauge. Not from the top of the page, but from the top of the viewport. This tells us how far the section is from top of the screen, which helps us decide how much to move the background 
and how to control the speed so that when we reach the middle, the image should be fully visible upright position. So we adjust the speed according to how much distance the section has from the top of the screen. Finally, we compute the offset and to do that, we take into account the distance from the viewport and multiply it with the speed. As the distance from the viewport decreases, this computer, computed value is also going to decrease. And when the distance from viewport reaches zero, which is the case here, the offset value is going to be zero as well, right? So at that point, the image would not have any offset and it's going to get displayed in its default value. So now you understand, uh, the we are going to slow down the speed as we reach the middle of the screen and the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen so that the full section is visible right from the top and is fully visible upright. The image is not rotated at all. Okay, so all we have to do is call this perilous effect as the user scrolls. So let's just do that. And for that, we are going to use document.body.addEventListener. We are going to listen to the event scroll on the body element. And we are going to call the parallax effect function as our handler. All right, let's save this. Go to our page, reload, and let's try it out. Okay, let's see. So take section one, for example, as we scroll down, the background moves down, revealing more of the bottom part of the image over here. But when you scroll further and reach the next section, section two's background image starts to move up from below the viewport. But at first you'll see the top of the second image as it enters the screen. But here's the interesting part where the second image is creeping up, its bottom part is starting to show and the image appears to invert. See? That were the trees of the second image. So they are appearing at the bottom and the bottom is appearing up top. But look what happens as the image two moves up. It starts from the top, but quickly begins to, to show more of the bottom. That makes it look like it's being flipped or inverted. But when it is fully visible on the screen, it is no longer inverted and appears in its correct orientation, filling the screen just as our algorithm wanted it to. This gives the illusion that the second image is seamlessly taking over the screen while the first image is moving out of the view, right? Having already shown its top part. To summarize, as you scroll, the background of each section moves according to how far down the page you have scrolled. Positive offsets move the image down, revealing the bottom part of the image, while negative offset move it up, revealing the top. The second image appears to invert and fill the screen, and so does the third. All right, also note that as the user scrolls, the content box, which is the part with your text images or any other elements, moves just normal with the rest of the page, since we have not interfered with its movement at all. So the background image of each section moves independently with its own speed, creating the parallax effect. But the content box stays in place and scrolls along with the rest of the page. So while background creates a sense of depth and motion, the content remains anchored and moves in a regular manner, maintaining the traditional scrolling behavior. So in the end, to recap, the parallax effect only applies to the background image, giving the illusion of depth and movement while the content box itself scrolls normally, making sure the text and other elements stay in place. That's how you create a parallax effect with JavaScript. Thank you for coding along, and I hope you found this explanation clear and helpful. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this tutorial. Happy coding. See you in the next video.